I just completed Ease Books 1 and 2, the classic action RPG, and did I like it? No. Did I love it? Yes, I absolutely loved it. I think this is a classic that every RPG fan should play. But before we get into why I loved it, I want to go through a few key points on how much I loved it and why I think it really is sort of a founding father of modern role-playing games, modern action role-playing games as well. I want to talk a little bit about the history. Of course, this game released in the late 80s, and a lot of people got to play it on the Master System, but they got to play Easebooks 1 on the Master System, but they never got to play Easebooks 2. Uh, and then they finally released it on the Turbo Duo, on the Turbo CD for the Turbo Graphics, and people finally got a chance to see this game and actually hear the amazing orchestration and CD quality music and sound for this. So at first when I was grappling with how am I gonna play this game, I decided to play it on the TurboGrafx Mini, which of course I shot a video on and I showed you how I played through almost all of Easebooks 1 on the TurboGrafx Mini, which is like one of those little mini consoles that they've you know, been releasing over the past few years. And it exploded on me. I did a whole video on how this thing died on me. The chip that, of course, powers the USB hubs exploded. Now, this is a common problem, and a lot of people have experienced this with the TurboGrafx Mini. So, oh my god, my save file, gone. My ability to play through eBooks 1, gone. What am I going to do? Well, come to the rescue is the Analog Duo, the amazing Analog Duo, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. But I managed to finally get a copy of Eastbooks 1 and 2 here, the Turbo CD version, which I managed to actually find on eBay and pick this up. So I got to start from scratch, play all of Eastbooks 1 once again, all the way through Eastbooks 2 on the Analog Duo using the original CD copy of Eastbooks 1 and 2, which is amazing. All right, enough of the history of this game and how I got my hands on copies. Let's talk about why I love this game and how it made me feel. It made me feel like a kid again. It really transported me back to Pennsylvania, growing up, my parents' house, playing Dragon Warrior for the first time, playing Final Fantasy for the first time. I felt like I was being entered into a world, being welcomed into an entirely new fantasy world with the Ease series. And I felt like a kid. I felt like I was back there sitting on the floor playing my NES, grinding through Dragon Warrior. And experience leveling up, grinding, leveling up, grinding. And yes, that's what this game is. There's a lot of leveling up. There's a lot of grinding. There's a lot of tedious dungeons. There's uh, labyrinthine mazes that make it very, very difficult, especially the mirror level where you're going through mirrors and back and forth, back and forth. Yes, some of that, of course, can be very tedious, yes. But I don't care, and as a kid, it didn't matter. Time, as a kid, time didn't seem to matter. And we could put in those hours and that escapism, that enjoyment of this fantasy world, and diving into these little villages and talking to the, the shopkeepers and the barkeeps and, and learning about the characters of this town. I mean, this is one of my all-time favorite games, Dragon Warrior, Dragon Warrior 2. I love the Dragon Warrior Dragon Quest series, but I have to tell you, if you had handed me a copy of Eastbooks 1, Eastbooks 2 at the same time, I'm going to say, right now, it would have stood totally on a whole other level than Dragon Warrior. Why? Well, let's get into it, because let's just start with the music here. Oh my gosh. This music is next level. And I'm sitting here playing on an analog duo through my surround sound system here in my game room. And the CD quality sound is just fantastic. I became ensconced in this music. Everything was different. It felt like every level, every boss fight, uh, from the, the wintry snowy cliffs, to going into this guy's basement to battle demons that are hidden in his basement. Everything was different and unique and compelling. Um, I could sit and listen to this, this orchestrated music for hours, and I will. Uh, I think it's one of the best soundtracks 
I've ever heard. And this is me coming off of playing Symphony of the Night last year during Halloween, which is another soundtrack that just blew me away. So I'm blessed that in about a year's time, I've gotten to hear two amazing soundtracks. I think this is really what's missing from a lot of modern games, uh, is just an amazing soundtrack from beginning to end. Really just the beautiful orchestrated music uh, in this game is, is next level. And to hear that CD quality sound, whew, again, I love my Dragon Warrior, but nothing compares to this. If you don't play, if you play the game for no other reason, then just play it to experience the music. Like if you can just deal with some of the grindiness of it, some of the labyrinthine mazes that you have to deal with, and some of the tedious leveling up, that's, you know, fine. Just to listen to the music is next level. Something else I loved about this game is how the cinematic cutscenes blended seamlessly with the gameplay. So here you are wandering around a village, and then you come to a cutscene and you have to interact with different villagers or different characters throughout the game, or bad guys, demons, and so forth. I am pure evil. And the colors, the sprites that you're seeing on screen then flows beautifully into the cinematics. And I thought, how difficult that must have been. I mean, one team working on the sprite w gameplay, uh, somebody else having to seemingly work on the cinematics with the voice acting and it flows beautifully. I'd never seen anything like that growing up. Of course, I was, again, playing games that didn't have these beautiful cinematics, the voice acting. And if I had had access to a Turbo Graphics back then, I would have been blown away by it. And the voice acting and the storytelling in this are fantastic. One of the things I think that's, again, I come back to Dragon Warrior, the story, kind of weak, right? Let's be honest, it's kind of weak. This story is compelling, it's large, it has emotion, you're invested in the characters as you go through the story of Eastbooks 1 and then into Eastbooks 2, you're learning the history of Ease, you're learning the, the history of this land, you're learning about what happened 700 years ago to have this area destroyed, uh, what happened that they had to remove the city and put it into the sky and all of these things. You're learning about all of these relationships and you're connected to all of these characters. And I have to say, by the end of the game, there's a scene, and this is not really giving anything away, I'll kind of keep it vague here, but uh, when, you, when you get to the end of the game, and, uh, and yes, you're gonna die a lot, by the way. You're gonna die a lot in this game, and that's okay, just make sure you're saving the game as you're progressing. There were a couple of times when I made a mistake and uh, didn't save properly, so make sure you're saving as you're progressing uh, through through the game. So anyway, as I get towards the end of the game, there's a beautiful scene where you're interacting with all of these villagers who you've encountered throughout the game. It's like, um, it's a really touching moment and you're getting to interact with them at each little story piece that they reminded you of and how you helped them throughout the game. And so these characters, they're rich and with the voice acting and the cinematics, you're, it's next level for like late 1980s gameplay. Holy smokes. And you're really, it really is compelling. I will say that it really had a, it hit me in the feels, I will say. Let's talk about the combat in this game, which is unlike any combat I've ever experienced before in a, in a role-playing game. In this, it's an action role-playing game. So you're not doing turn-based strategy. You're not taking turns back and forth like in Dragon Warrior. Here, or like Fire Emblem, here you're bumping into them, introducing this bump mechanic. Now, when I first started playing the game, I was like, wait a minute, am I just bumping into these guys? Is that how they're taking damage? And I'm, what's going on here? And yes, that's exactly right. When you bump, you bump into them, that's how you're actually using your sword and other things like that. As the game progresses, of course, you're getting additional powers. You can shoot fireballs with your, with your staff of magic and so forth. But yeah, essentially you're running right into them. Now that might sound easy. Okay, I'm just running into these guys and they're gonna take damage. No, no, if you go head first into them or they come up from behind you, you're gonna get killed. You've gotta figure out how to come at them from an angle in order to hit them appropriately so that they will take damage and you won't. And you really have to be smart about how you're conserving health points throughout this game and hit points throughout this game because there are times when you could make it all the way through a dungeon, wind up at the boss, and you're like, oh my god, now I have no health? What am I gonna do? I can't take on this boss with three hit points. I've gotta, I've gotta eat a, a, you know, some sort of a, a, an herb to bring health back. 
or I've got to travel back and, and get some health in order to come back here to fight this boss. So you've got to be smart about how you're conserving your health through the game too. But I just thought the combat was, was totally unique. And also, I've got to be honest with you, the grinding, it makes the grinding more fun. Because if you're in an open world, you're going around, you're hitting all these guys, you're bumping into them, you're, you're just getting gold, you're getting you know experience, and you just keep leveling up that way, it's a lot easier than playing Dragon Warrior, turn, hit a slime, turn, hit a slime, run, hit a slime, <laughs> attack. You know, it's, again, it's, it's a little bit faster. So I think for our more, more modern mentality, maybe we can handle this kind of combat because it's a little bit faster. I just want to say something about the Analog Duo, playing this on the Analog Duo. It's an unbelievable system. I'm going to say this, it's really phenomenal. Uh, I couldn't believe it when I unboxed it and I said, okay, I got to get one, I got to, I got to start with one game, right? I'm just going to buy one game for the Analog Duo and then I'm going to progress. I'll buy another one when I beat this one. And that's how I'm going to build up a little collection of, you know, Turbo Graphics games and, and Turbo uh, CD games and things like that. This is a phenomenal system and it just absolutely looked beautiful on my OLED screen. Uh, the, the speed with which it loads is fantastic. It also gets to show you, you know, uh, how many hours you've played your game. So it has a record in the system of the games you've played. Uh, the, the system is really fantastic. The CD quality sound, I, I cannot recommend it enough. It might be my, one of my new favorite gaming systems. And it felt like Christmas to me when I unboxed this game and unboxed this system. It's like, here I am in 1988 with a brand new system that I never had as a child. If you've made it this far in the video, I wanna say thank you because I have something special I wanna to say to you specifically. Chances are if you're here, you're a fan of Ease, you're a fan of the Ease series, you're also probably a fan of games, talking about games, and you have an appreciation for it, like I do. But there's a reason I wanted to save this for the end. I'm wearing this shirt for a reason. That's because Johnny Millennium over at the Happy Console Gamer his channel, phenomenal channel. He's probably done more, now I'm gonna say this certifiably, he has done more to bring awareness to the E series to an English speaking audience than anyone in the world, hands down. I will argue with you till the cows come home about that. Yeah, I love the E series, man. We didn't really know about it. And thanks to his YouTube channel and bringing awareness and his love of ease to a broader audience, that's how we know about this game. So I thought uh, I couldn't have played this game. I wouldn't have even known about this game if it wasn't for Johnny over at the Happy Console Gamer. So thanks to him for introducing us to this incredible series. I've now played Eastbooks 1 and 2. I played E's Origin. I have a couple others lined up ready to go. I want to play E's 3 and 4. I want to go through the whole series. I am now a fan of the E's series. So Johnny, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. It's over now. We're moving forward. And thanks to all of you for subscribing and hanging out with us, talking retro games, talking games in general, and a great series, Eastbooks 1 and 2. I highly recommend go out and buy it. Buy it if you can. If you can still get it on like the Wii Virtual Console somehow, you might be able to do it that way. Or pick up a copy, play it on the Analog Duo. There's a couple of different ways that you can play it, but I highly recommend playing it in its original form right here. So thanks so much for subscribing. Thanks for being a part of the community, and we'll see you next time.